Hey, what is up everyone? Killer in here bringing you another video, and it is now time for us to talk about Elyon. Elyon is a game that's developed by Blue Hole, aka the makers of Terra, and is being published by Kakao, aka the previous publishers in NA for Black Desert Online. And so with that in mind, there's been a lot of expectations and talk of kind of what Elyon is going to be as a whole. It is a game primarily focused around PvP with, you know, different PvE elements, that being solo and group play and a lot of open world type content. There are two factions, so you will be, you know, choosing basically between red or blue um, when, whenever you're making your character. Across that, um, all in all, the max level of the game is level 50, but to my knowledge, no one has actually hit level 50 as of this point. So that kind of like BDO where there's kind of a soft cap, which I believe is around 45, and then pushing beyond that, it's just very, very slow, and it gives you something at least that you're kind of working towards. As far as the factions... You have access to all the different races that are available within the game, of which that is going to be the Ein, aka furries, um, of which they are small little furry people, and you know they have different looks where you can be a dog, you can be a raccoon, you can be a cat. They overall have a pretty solid um, character creation system, and I'll probably make another video on that uh, very, very soon, because closed beta is actually going to be happening tomorrow. Elves, which I'm assuming 95% of the player base is going to be. Humans, and orcs. Once again, you can be all these different um, fa or races within each individual faction or each faction. So, fair customization, pretty limited on the races. They didn't give me my Ellen, but, you know, some people think that's a good thing, which is, I guess, fine with me. Within Elyon, there are going to be six classes upon release. The first of which is going to be the Warlord. Warlord is actually the class that I'm thinking of playing myself. It's basically if they took kind of like a Berserker and a Lancer uh, out of Terra and kind of mashed them into one. We can take a quick glance kind of like what that looks like. They have leaping skills. There is Giga Leash. You basically have stuns, lots of control. There's a spin attack. You know, just general, you know, Lancer, Zerker esque type things. This game is a lot more focused around the concept. Um, a lot more focused around the concept of pretty large AoEs uh, with all of your attacks and kind of learning how to CC people. Staggers do exist within the game and trying to like combo into that. There's a lot of like chip damage in this game. Not as big as like, you know, I can't full charge a thunder strike or full charge a cyclone, roll into an evasive smash and like one shot somebody with a back, you know, with a back crit in this game. It's a lot more just chunk damage. Moving on with more classes that are kind of influenced and inspired by Terra, you have your mystic. What does the mystic do, guys? Oh, it heals. Oh, it poisons things. Oh, it summons like grass tentacles out of the ground yeah so this is very very similar to that of which Terra was this is going to be the only primary support class outside of you know arguably warlord which is more of a lancer tank class this is the only primary support class that also has access to a lot of damage and a lot of control Kind of shows you very similar style in terms of like the general open world PvE of Terra. Lots of grouping of mobs, you know, stacking up things, applying dots to them. And I'll show you another kind of clip of what we can kind of expect a little bit later on whenever it comes to open world grinding. Next up is going to be the Assassin. Now the Assassin is what you would expect of an assassin. Uh, assassins, generally speaking, are very quick. They have the access to stealth, meaning that they are invisible. Um, and from what I've seen of assassin gameplay, they are very focused around the concept of either engaging, doing a quick burst of spells, and then disengaging, 
and then trying to like throw shuriken from range or they're just kind of kiting around at range as a whole we'll take a quick glance at the assassin very mobile class lots of like jumps up jumps back you know like i'm saying there are more of this kind of engage hit things with like two or three skills and then back away like as we're as we're clearly seeing from this these this class, from what I've heard in Korea, is extremely strong in open world PvP, and I expect it to be a pretty strong contender uh, as far as essentially what people are selecting. Now, for the bane of my existence, for those of you who have been around long enough to know that, you know, I played a Berserker in Terra, and uh, I had a specific class that I didn't like, and I really regret that they put this class into the game. Everyone's favorite. Flo, if you're watching this, I know what you're playing. And I'm going to hunt you. Either way, Slayer. Slayer is literally Slayer from Terra. Plain and simple, straightforward, two-handed sword-wielding class that isn't like the fastest. They're not the fastest, but they have a lot of skills that, you know, provide protection, provide a little bit of CC. It's, it's literally, that's heart thrust. Okay, all right, a little bit of auto attack, so you got a whirlwind strike on him. Okay, um, that's a little bit different of a skill. Oh, look, there's a vis rate. Oh, wow. And then what? Overhead strike. Nice. The Slayer is literally Slayer out of, out of Terra. It is the newest class and will be available. Uh, it's not going to be available for closed beta 1, which, by the way, I am going to be playing tomorrow um, and streaming it. And... Um, but they will be available in closed beta 2. Alright, two other classes remain. Next up we have the Elementalist. Elementalist is going to be kind of what you would think. It is basically Sorcerer from Terra. Uh, the, with this being developed by Blue Hole, they really basically made a lot of classes of Terra while revamping the combat system. I, the way I look at it is it's much more like their later class design philosophy. Like, essentially from Gunner on, where all the skills were huge arcs and lots of just like, you know, more X skill leads into Y skill. I don't think this game has as much nuance as Terra did in its early days. But in terms of like optimization and in terms of like... I guess just general accessibility for a lot of players. I believe that this is a much better developed game than than what Terra was. Uh, Terra, you got stuck into a, a game loop very, very quickly. And also, in the end, we also got stuck basically only doing PvE to where they removed PvP essentially from Terra as a whole. And this game, it's the opposite. Uh, the biggest focus is PvP. So back to what the classes are. Elementalist. It is your standard sorcerer. Fire, ice, lightning. Um, they essentially have a lot of similar skills to um, to what we saw as sorcerer. Not, not quite as much as what with slayer. But large AoEs, lots of mob grouping, icy slows and whatnot. You basically see Nova there with chain lightning. Fairly mobile, which is large AoEs. Apparently, Elementalist is the best PvE class as a whole. And so, all in all, pretty like pretty solid class. I know a lot of people are planning on playing this because they will be very strong in group PvP and uh, 3v3s and whatnot. Lastly is Gunner. Gunner is not Terra Gunner as much. You basically have access to several different kinds of weapons, like submachine guns, pistols, rifles, and then Giga Gunner type, you know, arc cannon stuff. Lots of kiting, lots of like homing missiles, very agile class all in all. And so, realistically, I think that this will be a really fun class to play. I, I was even considering playing it as a whole. But, um, and there, there's literally an arc shot right there. But, <laughs> um, this is going to be the class that you're kiting the most on. While just constantly pecking out damage. And one thing that I would like to say, and this is from what I've heard of like Korean interviews and whatnot. If you have a character that you think looks fun, just play it. 
Like, like literally just play it because they went in the first, because the game's been out for four months in Korea. Okay. Four months in Korea. Within those four months, they've basically flipped the meta like two or three times of what are the best classes. So inherently, whatever class you pick, there's going to be a meta that's res that's revolved around you probably within the next like two to three months. As of right now, the big dick meta classes are Warlord and Slayer. But outside of that, every class is extremely viable and just pick it, you know, what, what actually looks interesting. Elyon is going to be a full open world game between the two factions split by this little line in the middle. Um, so you will be able to ride from here down to here. The middle zones where like kind of this orange and this purple, this is the contested areas. In other words, the areas which the highest level resources are going to be and where you are meeting the opposing faction. Elyon is a very focused PvP game, so expect to engage in open world combat. And there's even leaderboards for people who ha who participate in open world PvP. I was going to show a quick couple examples of kind of general grinding that we're going to be seeing. This is courtesy of Steparu. I'm sure everyone knows who Steparu is. Re kind of reviews tons and tons of games. This is this is Mystic gameplay. So as you can see, grouping up multiple mobs just like Terra back in the day literally has the same highlight function where she's dropping and placing poison onto people, summoning up, you know, these like little tentacles essentially that will group up and AoE mobs with it. This is literally exactly what Terra was, except you can see it's more generalized around AoE, right? All in all, very very similar and this is what you can be expecting to do whenever you're grinding for silver or for gold in the open world and you're seeing xp and loot automatically go into their inventory on that left hand side following that there is also lots of solo dungeons that we'll be doing much like what we saw uh whenever you, if you've ever done gilly glade or things like that in terra Things that you are supposed to log into daily or several times a week where you are clearing and doing um, solo related like boss content. So these bosses have, you know, indicators and just general mechanics that you have to dodge out of causing the ball to like head into them. And so this kind of gives you an idea of like what the general, you know, what you'll be doing at end game is a lot of like solo oriented content while then going into PVP scenarios following that all right now moving on to like I, what i said this is a pvp game this game focuses a lot on large scale uh pvp being it, it being a faction versus faction game i wanted to kind of show the an example of this if it loads for me staparu is playing a mystic and this is very reminiscent in my opinion of old guild wars in in terra because you see hundreds, like literally hundreds of players throwing out AoEs and everything like that. And honestly, guys, I don't really see that many gray blobs. And if you do see a gray blob, guess what? You could actually still see the animations it's doing. They have definitely learned from Terra in this sense that at least we want to be able to see what the heck is going on whenever we're doing large scale PVP. Though there are obviously a lot of, you know, things going on on the screen. I honestly have a lot of hope for this and I think it'll be really fun if you can get into a good guild. And also with the PVP focus, this game does have three versus three. Three versus three, two v two and one v one of which these are also rated and I believe reset weekly or, or monthly. And so, once again, competitive players are going to rejoice. It definitely, like I said, is much more of a chip type game. I don't think people die in like immediately, like what we saw with, with a lot of kind of early on or, or metas within Terra. There's a lot more chip damage that goes on and a lot of like the focus is catching people and then just piling as much damage as you can and then preventing them from recovering. So... 3 versus 3 is going to be a thing. It is rated and it is a big deal and one of the main things that people focus on uh, as far as determining your skill. And this is from the channel MMO Heart, which is from Twitch stream VNFDLV2. 
uh, playing this here. So I just want to give appropriate credit for the videos that I'm watching here. Next up, I want to go over just a quick rundown of the customization that's going to be available within the game. And this video is already running super long because I can't talk fast enough. So, the way that this works is that you get skill points by socketing your gear. Whenever you socket your gear, there are colors to crystals. While you, Whenever you get these skill attributes, every single class has 24 skills. Across these 24 skills, there's going to be four different iterations, kind of like what you can see here. Um, these are very similar to runes that uh, were, or glyphs in Terra. So, like, let's say you have your normal auto attack up here at the top. The, the next one will make it to where after you auto attack five times, you'll gain, like, a 20% attack speed for five seconds. Then one following that makes it to where you have, like, while you're auto attacking, it's doing double damage. The next one after that, it will make it to where um, you gain, let's see here... Or like the, the very last one here actually will launch. I don't know if I can show you the picture of it. It makes it to where the auto attack is actually ranged. To where it's throwing blades out. Okay. So this is going to come by socketing your gear. And you get skill points by socketing your gear. So putting sockets into your gear, uh, which, which I'll address in later videos, is going to be like the main thing that allows you to progress and make your character more powerful. There are two other systems that, that are also available, which this has to do, uh, referred to as the mana system, which there's a specific dungeon that you can go into and level, and as you level, you basically can progress up these trees. You have one that increases projectiles, you have one that increases like your skill damage and ultimate damage, and you have one that is focused around evasion. Now, with these, at the top of them, you also have transcendent skills, which are very, very pivotal in terms of setting the playstyle that you're going to have. Because, for example, this one makes it to where your ultimate skills damage is doubled. So if you're a very combo-oriented class, progressing up this tree by doing the dungeon and leveling this up, this is going to be huge. If you are playing more of a siege or, you know, um, like a siege or group PvP type thing, this thing literally makes it to where... Let me see if I can actually... I wish the uh, website here was a little bit better off in terms of showing this. There we go. This one here actually makes your projectiles from sending only one out it actually sends two out while reducing the the collective damage of it but it's now covering a wider range this will be huge in pvp or different things along the lines of like whenever you can use your shift skill so your shift skill which is an iframe which every class has access to the cost is reduced by 80 percent so you can be a, an extremely mobile type character if that's the playstyle you want to play. You know, assassins, gunners, things like that. And so this is something that also has a whole bunch of different modifiers that you'll be selecting through as you progress up these trees. Um, and just adding further depth to your general character. And then lastly, the uh, or the option, which, uh, guys, I'm probably going to make additional videos on this because this is already running stupid long. But this has to do with the color of gems that you socket within your gear. There are six different things. Every single class or every single character has access to these. If you are socketing red crystals into your gear, if you have three points of red crystals uh, skill slots, then in that point, guess what? You access the first line. Increasing crit, increasing just general damage, things along those lines within this. Control, more CC oriented stuff. You deal additional damage whenever you stun people. You can trigger stuns on people. You extend the duration of your stuns. This is RNG and for like leveling basically gives you increased loot whenever you kill mobs, increased XP whenever you're killing mobs, and um, you know, weird like RNG stuff where it's like you kill an enemy, there's a 2% chance to reset all your skill cooldowns. Support as, as you imagine, whenever you're attacking, whenever you're healing, you're applying additional heals onto players. Defense. As you'd imagine, whenever you're taking damage, it's reduced. Whenever you're, you know, dealing some damage, you might heal back a little bit. 
Um, and then lastly, awakening, which I find is the most interesting, which is this trade-off where you can basically increase your damage and healing by 8%, but increase the damage taken by 4%. So there, uh, and you know, different things of that nature, increasing movement speed, but decreasing attack speed, increasing damage dealt, but increasing critical damage taken. It's, I really think that this is an interesting one and we'll probably see a lot of min maxing around it. And these are all in accordance to the kinds of crystals that you actually put in your gear. And I'll, like I said, I'll make another video kind of going more in depth with this. I just wanted to give a quick rundown guys of what Elyon is. This video ran way too long and I am going to be playing closed beta um, tomorrow on the 6th. I'm going to actually start up my stream at 6 a.m. tomorrow. And so if anyone's willing, I would be awesome to come, you know, say hi, talk about the Terra days and see what Elyon can be. But other than that, guys, twitch.tv slash Killrian, youtube.com slash Killrian, twitter.com slash Killrian. What do you know? Um, I do multi-stream, so I hope that y'all, I catch y'all there. Peace, peace, everybody.